Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Harford Township Board of Commissioners work session for Monday, August 7, 2017. The board did meet in executive session at 6 o'clock to discuss a legal matter. Uh, Mr. Secretary, would you please take the roll? Here. Mr. D'Amelio? Here. Mr. McCluskey? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Holmes is on vacation this week. Mr. McGarity? Here. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Here. For those that can, if everyone could please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Chief? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you very much. And again, welcome this evening to the work session. And to begin the work session off, we have a construction manager's update. Uh, Mr. Brennan, if you'd like to approach the podium, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, We'd like to uh, get a change order approved. Uh, it was in the monthly report. It is for added electrical work for the fuel station. Um, we're looking to get a not to exceed number approved because at this time we just received the last revision to the pricing and we need some time to negotiate it. Um, the value of that would be $57,000. Um, the reason for this is um, it's due to the contract was written for the electrical work under the building work itself and then there was another separate project for the fuel station for the police and that was also done and now this change order essentially is marrying the two together to get the electrical scope of work correct and proper to allow the fuel station to, approve, to be approved and to pass through the state inspection. Okay. Just curious as to why that wasn't anticipated up front. Just be, they were they were just two separate projects itself, and then this is just getting it together uh, as one. And uh, some of the work obviously is in this contract because electrical contractor, you don't want anybody else going into his panels, essentially. Um, so he has to do that work because you don't want to avoid any warranties. Okay, and that's that'll be on the agenda for for next week okay yeah and, and the only reason we brought it to you is just because it was a time sensitive issue um mm -hmm. it's holding up completing the parking lot and some other stuff so that's that was the only reason we would bring it to you without being fully negotiated okay thank you thank you um as far as an update the the schedule now i know we were reporting of early september now it looks like the latter part of september for completion of the first floor um the contractors are working on finishes itself the first floor is about 95% paint it, ceiling grid is all in. Um, we're working with the mechanicals above the ceiling and to put equipment into the ceiling grid itself. And then we'll start dropping ceiling tiles and start flooring next week. Um, we just started up the rooftop equipment last week and we'll have that fully running so that the, the building is humidity and temperature controlled to allow the floor finishes to go down. Um, and we're also working towards getting the water line moved, which should happen this week, and then tying in the storm sewer out in the road. So then we can start finishing up fixtures, testing those, and we'll work towards getting the gas line um, hooked up now that we have that wall installed. The second floor is proceeding um, along. They are um, probably about 75% done with walls. The rough-ins are um, proceeding and, and nearing completion. And, um, you know, with the, the first floor turnover, a lot of the systems itself have to be started up and have to already happen. So the second floor should go a little bit smoother um, and allow the finishes. And we'd also like to invite every, all the commissioners to take a tour of the building. Uh, we have a biweekly job conference. So the 21st at 3.30, um, everybody will be out of there so we can walk through and we don't have to worry about any of the contractors. Um, myself and uh, Lori, the architect and the engineer will all be there and be available for questions and to walk through the space if anybody would like to attend. So you believe that by the end of September, the police should be able to begin to occupy that building? They, they should be able to begin the build out of their furniture, which I understand is gonna take two weeks and, and then start moving into that space, yes. 
So everything will be completed, including the, the there's two garages from what I'm, is that correct? And they'll be ready? The, the outbuilding you're talking about, yeah. Yes. So it'll be ready for the police to, to walk in. Yeah, and to, to transport um, in late September. Anyone that was uh, arrested, right? The Sally Port. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will be operational. And then the uh, the rest of the building will be completed sometime. Uh, the, we'll it, ready it to walk be completed in, in December. Yes. In um, December. Actually, the first on the second floor will be complete with the IT sweep because that needs to be operational for the police to come in and occupy. But everything else will be in December. And then the um, the old police station will come down in. Yep. To, to October is it? Or? That, that'll follow as soon as um, I believe there's after the, the build out of the furniture a couple of weeks of moving and then there's two weeks of asbestos abatement which is awarded under a separate contract mm -hmm. once that's wrapped up then the tear down of the building will happen okay does anybody else have any further questions thank you mr. Bren okay, appreciate it next on the agenda we have here uh, Mrs. Widop with the um, macro energy contractor for the street lighting presentation, phase three. Hello. Um, as the board knows, we've been working on a program of street light retrofits, replacing many of the old uh, mercury vapor and high pressure sodium lights with um, energy efficient LED lights. The street light retrofit is part of the township's climate protection action plan. Um, and we are into, we'll be commencing phase three <laughs> now. Uh, the first phase involved a retrofit of lighting at the Skadium, which was interior and exterior. Uh, the second was, um, and, and I'm sorry, in the Westgate Hills neighborhood. That was the pilot program for the lights to see how residents reacted to the type of lighting. Um, that was 100 lights. We just did uh, all of Ward 4 and three precincts in Ward 3 recently as Phase 2. Ward 4 was selected first because it had the highest number of street lights. We went for the biggest number. Uh, I believe the total was 672 lights. I'm getting my cues from the contractor. Um, and that um, that has put us on a path to look at what we could do with phase three by the end of this year. Now, phase three initially, when we received the pricing, was limited to two precincts in the second ward, two precincts in the eighth ward, and one precinct in the third ward. So there were five precincts being developed there instead of the seven precincts we had just done. And that was just a question of, Everything um, that we have done to fund this, the board hasn't allocated additional funding at all. This is all being done uh, leveraging commodity savings, energy savings on the lights, and whatever we can fit into our operational budgets. The cost of the retrofits are being paid for, if you will, but in installments to the utility. It's a tri-party agreement between our utility company, Constellation, um, the contractor, Macro Energy, and the township. So the utility pays the contractor to do the work. We repay the utility and the installments on our electric bill. The, um, Can this I ask, per ask you just a question? Um, have there been any objections or concerns about the lighting expressed by any residents? To the contrary, we've gotten a lot of compliments oh. about the light, the clarity of the light, especially where we're, we're replacing high-pressure sodium lights because they... They have a different type of light, and you can't see like a lot of colors at night, and there's just a, a lack of clarity, whereas the LED is a lot clearer. And because the technology has improved so much, um, when we initially did some work a few years back, yeah, um, we got some complaints about like the blue hue, and this is a warmer light. Um, it's more easy to uh, adjust and direct them. Where we have had complaints about the brightness, we've applied shields to the fixtures um, to, ad to address that. So um, we have been getting pretty good feedback on this. As a matter of fact, I guess the 
the commissioners. I know it's in your ward, in your neighborhood, Larry and Steve. And I know that uh, the third and fourth ward commissioners have some experience with this. The initial work that we did many years ago was actually ninth ward right. primarily. So we're, and that was heavier into um, a different type of lighting. It was called induction lighting that you see inside a lot of factories, uh, induction lights. And that, it's not as energy efficient as the LED. And the LED was not, it, it didn't meet a lot of our sta the standards for PICO for some of the rebates. There was a lot of problems with the LED. That's all changed. It's a whole new generation of LED lights and we're taking advantage of that. I ask you one other question. Uh, um, you said we have a um, Constellation is our energy provider. So, what is how long is our contract with them? Because every you know, as a consumer, every six months I'm shopping for a new electric supplier. Mm -hmm. So, what is what what do we do uh, when it comes to that? Well, when we go out looking for prices um, and we pit the utilities against one another um, uh, and sort of try to drive the prices down. And when we do it, we take a look at what they're offering in terms of 12 month, 18 month, um, and 24 month contracts typically. Um, here, one of the proposals actually would be to um, extend the contract out. Our current contract runs till December 2020. Um, and at the end of December 2020, some of the installments drop off. The installments for the work that was done at the Skadium and the work that was done at, um, at in Westgate. We extended that contract just for the repayment so it would come in on budget. Um, in this particular request, however, um, we had three proposals from the contractor um, to do some work and the one proposal that comes in under budget is to do uh, precinct 2122 Eight two, eight three, and three three. Five so four, five two, five one. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. Well, that's one of the options. Let me go from there. Okay, and then we had another option that was all of the second ward, all of the eighth ward, and three three, so that we were cleaning up the the wards. Um, then the third option was the first ward because we only had one precinct that we finished there. We need to go in and finish the other three precincts all of the second, all of the fifth, all of the eighth, and three, three. So we're trying to take chunks out of, we have 3,600 streetlights, so we're trying to knock them out, but it's a very expensive proposition. So in one of our meetings, Amy uh, Cuthbertson and I have been meeting with the utility and Larry Gentelli and, and Doc. Um, and in one of the meetings, we had a conversation, um, and the, the contractor actually said, well, with your next proposal, the unit price comes down because you've hit a certain tier. So, of course, the antenna went up and we all asked, well, what happens if we finished out all of the second and eighth ward? And, and they said, well, you'll hit another tier and you'll have um, savings on the purchasing the units themselves. So, to do the five precincts that we talked about, we would save, uh, we'd have a 6% discount on the fixtures, they would be $435.66 a piece. Um, and that is 543 lights, because if you take into consideration what we've already purchased in this calendar year for wards three and four and add it to this number, we get, we get into that tier. Then there's another tier, if we finish all of eight, two, and three, we, we come to a 12% savings on the unit prices. They drop to 404.84 a unit. That would be a total of 983 fixtures purchased. Um, or the final option, words 1, 2, 5, 8, and precinct 3, 3, total 1,619 units. And because that throws us well over a 2,000 unit threshold, the savings jump to 34% per unit. So the, the unit price comes down to 305.33. Obviously we can't cover that out of our operational expenses. To do so would result in a tax increase and we all know how much you enjoy a tax increase. You don't want to uh, consider that. You want us to look at other options. So one of the options is since you're in 
you're starting your budget preparation um, now is to look at your reserves and you have like a mandated reserve account where you, you've decided that this is how much money you're going to set aside, like rainy day stuff, um, and, and how much over that mandate you have right now for this calendar year. Um, and using that reserve money and applying it to this as a one-time thing. It's not the reserves funds cannot be used, and Amy will shoot me if I don't say, it cannot be used to plug holes in a budget. But if you have this overage at this particular time, you may have an opportunity to see some savings. And it's just one thing to consider when you're working on your budget preparation. Do you have any questions about the program? It happens to be a yeah. rainy day out there. Lori, can I ask the, uh, the contractor uh, a couple things? Number one, are these lights like Steve, they're all above ground. Up? Yeah. This is Steve Hershenrider. He's with Macro Energy. He's the president of the company. Okay. In my ward, which is the seventh ward, along Arlington Road, Ridgeway Road, there's underground wiring. Okay. Sure. Now, are these lights all going to be above ground? These are all above ground. These are all mounted on the poles. So there'll be no more underground. Yeah. Okay. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, who do we go to? when you have a light out. Now, you just installed lights along 38 Bray, uh, along Brayburn Road. Okay, one of those lights is already out. Right, it'll be fixed on Thursday. On so, Thursday. Macro Energy is the, uh, takes on the warranty obligation for the full 10 years that the manufacturer offers that warranty, and we do that both product and labor. So, there's a single point of contact, Macro Energy, who comes out and actually fixes these for you at no cost to have a township. Okay, but you know about the 38 Brayburn? Yes, yeah, we were informed about that. Okay, right. and... Uh, what was the, oh, the other thing, I assume you're talking when you say 8th Ward and 3rd Ward and this, those stand-up lights, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, we would call them a post hopper. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, in the 7th Ward, I have two of them. Okay. <laughs> Just two, but I do have two. So I didn't hear the 7th Ward mentioned in that. Yeah, I don't believe so. 7th ward, ward is included. not in this phase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, someday Jim. we're going to be there, I hope. You are. Someday you <laughs> are going to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're Did you hear that? <laughs> someday you are going to be there. Yeah. But for this particular phase, we're, we're really focused on phase three, which is something that we had initially anticipated doing a kickoff before the end of this calendar year. Again, to try and take advantage of um, an economy of scale in terms of purchasing everything in this calendar year that, to add to what we've already purchased. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. That's yeah. Anything else? Yep. Maury, could you, uh, you, you, gave us, you gave us a savings in terms of percentages. Can you give it to us in dollars? Uh, yeah. Let's so if we go that, the difference between the 34% the and the next two tiers? Yeah, you're at um, $130 a piece. Uh, I meant total, you know, for, you for the whole project. So we can see for budgeting. Do yeah. you have the, t the top, the top line number? It, she, it, there's 404, then 305. Um, but I think he's talking about the savings. 1619 times 130. I'm not. I, I could take my shoes off. We can get to 20. <laughs> but no, you, but you talked about if you did X number in one phase and what the total was for that phase, if we did the next, if you got the 693 units and then. And the next one was if you, you got over the 2,000 tier, yes, what so that would be. So, just so we can see what the impact on the budget would be as opposed to. The, the over 2,000 tier, so that, um, I'm breaking it out into tiers in terms of unit because it's, it's easy to look at that way. It's about a $210,000 savings. Okay. That's what I was saying. 210000 okay. I did want to mention to you that the person at 38 Brayburn said the new lights uh, are very attractive and better lit on the street. So they were, they're happy about it. They just want 38 fixed, but they're happy about the rest of the lights. Thank you. We appreciate it. How, how long does it take roughly to complete a ward? It, it's weather dependent, which is always so tough. But right. um, as a point of reference, when we did the pilot project around 100 fixtures, it took us three days to complete all of them. About 100 and fixtures, okay. So about 33 to 35 a day uh, per team. 
Thank you. Yeah, sure. And I can just say that it's been a big improvement, and I have had no complaints at all. So you can't have better than none. But it, you, you notice the difference. It's, it's, it's a definite improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mrs. Whitup, okay. that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have um, allocations for the skate park. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have? No. No, you're good? Okay. Uh, Mr. Denny is not here this evening. All right. But I can answer if any yeah. questions. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Mayor. Go no, I just it. talked to Mr. Denny prior to the uh, to that. But th this is the $35,000 to complete the, um, the skate park over in Mary Place. And it is budget. Yeah. And it's, it's budgeted, so there's no... Um, no questions there about where the money's coming from. So this would be, you know, concrete built mm -hmm. at, at the location for, um, you know, would finish making it permanent, making the uh, would, Mary Place the permanent home of of the um, of the skate park. And uh, Mike's in the audience there. He approves of of the uh, the skate park committee approves of this. Am I correct? Uh, yes. yes. He is shaking his head. Yes. The location. And the location and, and, the, and, the, and the, the type of the equipment. They had a um, they had a lot of say in in what was going to be there. So it's been a big success. What yeah. what, what is the end? Or do we anticipate they'll be able to uh, complete this this year, or is it construction oh, next yes. year? Absolutely. Yes. Once we uh, approve it officially next week, we'll institute it, and it shouldn't take more than a few weeks to get it done. So great. Yeah. Okay. And changes to the ordinance uh, regarding the dog dogs in the park. Uh, yeah, there's actually a few uh, uh, items. <clears throat> Do you want to? Yeah, I can talk about that too. Uh, <clears throat> what I was worried about with this ordinance was the changes to the ordinance uh, regarding the dog parks, and I know uh, Tim talked about it. Also, was uh, children who have um, who are allergic to dogs, um, and if we allow those dogs to be around the perimeter. If we have children around that perimeter right now, what would happen is if a child, if a parent had a child, that that dog would be would, would have to go away. They'd have to take the dog away. But <clears throat> with this ordinance, it would allow the dog to be there, so both the child and the dog have the same right to be there. And this is this is something that was troubling to me because I have residents who do have um, children who are allergic, and so. Um, I believe, uh, in speaking to Mr. Denny, he has added some language to the to this ordinance um, so that <coughs> the the children are. Uh, we can discuss it more in the, you know, when Tim's here. But um, we're not going to. I'm sorry. Were you putting this on for next Monday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have real concerns about this. I mean, I'm a dog person. Everyone here mm -hmm. knows that oh, yeah. I love dogs. But I think dogs in the parks. My concern is when they mess and most people have a bag and they use the bag to pick up the mess you don't get it all and so you're going to have a lot of waste left over commissioner could i read the yeah. two uh, the things that uh mr denny and i discussed mm -hmm. prior to uh, me going away to the two things that he would actually add to is the dogs are permitted in the parks only on the pathways trails passive areas and within 10 foot perimeter of the park all the dogs must be in control by the handler and on a leash. The leash cannot be any longer than six foot. Um, dogs are not permitted in playground areas, athletic fields, courts, buildings, or pavilions. Handlers must properly clean up and dispose of the waste. Uh, no other domestic animals are allowed without a permit. They're the two. So, okay, items. so let's just take Westgate Park. Where would dogs be allowed? Well, if there's not a trail or Is it? be on the perimeter. Within 10 foot of the perimeter. Within the perimeter. The perimeter. And every place in that park is where people are. Every place. There's not a, I mean, it's not that big of a park. And so almost every square foot is used by residents. If not, if not playing baseball, they're playing basketball. If not playing basketball, they're playing hockey. Mm -hmm. Or they're in the play area there, or they're in the perimeters over there. Well, that 10-foot that area, isn't that a coexisting <coughs> area? Is that the area set up for coexistence for... Both dogs and people. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't. I couldn't um, comment on that. I, I, we would have to wait to, for Tim to come back to give you a proper uh, answer to that question. But I mean, we're doing this because there's multiple 
request from the residents. I, I understand. To, to move I, forward. I mean, so. look, as I said, I'm a dog person as well. I love dogs, and I wish I still had one. But I also have to look at, I think, as Mario was bringing up, the you know the health and safety of not only children but but everyone that plays there. I mean, you're not going to pick it all up. And some even ten feet wherever. I mean, Westgate Park. I just don't know where they would be able to do that. I'm wondering, did this go before any of our committees? Or yeah, this went in front of the Park and Rec Committee. This is their rec Yeah. You, you, you can you come, come up to up? the mic? Yeah. To. I just just so the public can hear you. Representing the Park Committee, get name and representing the committee. Michelle Alvarez, I'm from the Parks Board. Um, we did discuss this at great lengths, and um, we conceded to make it a six foot lead versus the state mandated 10 foot lead so that it would contain the dog closer to the person and we already apparently and i don't know the number have an ordinance about picking up dog waste so people know that they have to pick that up and i get that you're right it could happen that they don't pick 100 percent of it up they never um, but i i haven't been to every park but and yes, Westgate's tight, so I don't know if that 10 foot actually overlaps any field or so forth, but they can't go on the courts. So the hockey court and the basketball court are, and the play area, the playground, are already out of limits. But the perimeter, yes, so I don't, I didn't measure every, we didn't measure every park. So, but yes, we discussed it at great lengths at our parks board meeting to come up with this verbiage and and get it handled as soon as possible because it's a conflict and apparently the animal warden is confused. Some parks say no, some parks say yes. So it's just to make it more consistent throughout the entire township. Yeah, I, I, I would, I'm not ready to, to vote for this next month. I think there's still so many unanswered questions and I think, that, you know, thanks to the park board, but maybe have the parks board come and give a, a presentation on, on every park and where. Where would it where would it be? I mean, I just don't think we're maybe, ready. I think maybe there's we so should many just discuss this when Tim's here. So he that's fine. But yeah. I, I'm not ready to vote for this on, on on Monday. I mean, you know, well, we, you can, spend, we can table it if we just so choose. You know, yeah, I mean, I think action. look, you know, but we, could, we should have it on the agenda at least. That's fine. Yeah, but but I yeah I think that if we can't get some of the answers, I mean, I don't know if Parks Board's going to have time to to do a presentation on Monday. Who's your chairman now? Is it uh, well? Uh, as far as time, I don't think we have the time for a presentation on Monday. No, there's no. Yeah, that's why it was coming tonight. But, what is um, the, um, can I just ask about the ordinance for, uh, maybe you don't know, and Lori just stepped out, but what's the fine for not curbing your dog? I think it's $300. There, yeah. Is that the maximum we could impose? Can we impose more? I thought we were going to do that. I would impose whatever is the absolute maximum. I think it's usually up to $1,000. Well, then said we got to seriously judge. think about because there's no excuse for not right, curbing yeah. your dog. I and thought I, we, I thought no we had that. addressed that. So well, whatever the maximum fine ordinance, is. I'm just saying that's not yeah. an ordinance we discussed. So anyway, I want that should be hand in hand in my view. Certainly. I mean, I, I want to make sure that the Next fine is very when severe. This comes up if you decide not the table or table, but yeah. you can certainly bring that up and, and make that recommendation, and Tim can change yeah. and come back with a revised. Yeah, I, I thought we did that. Andy brings up a good point because because of where we're going to be. Well, I mean, I I just don't I don't know what the specific curb is, but I mean, I think the, the $300 fine was for this language that Tim provided here. Yeah. So I don't know if the cur the curb you're, the curbing the dog is a separate ordinance altogether. So yeah. I, I don't know what that fine is. But yeah, I'm just curious. The but 300 I, I just number comes from I, this. I don't, I don't know whether, we want to make sure it's, you know, enforced obviously, but you want to make sure that people know that there's a severe penalty for not curbing your dog. And again, there's no excuse for not doing it. So anyway, we should just, Discuss what that amount should be, whether it should be three hundred or four hundred or five hundred or you know whatever it might Irving be. Irving is already on the books. Right? It already is. Yeah, I'm just saying three hundred dollars is not enough in my mind. I agree. I think totally. be, I totally agree no, with that. Just like littering, there's no excuse for littering, and I, I'd make that a thousand dollars too, or up to me. Put him in jail. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's yeah. Let's a new one. We'll have a new jail. Let's come, let's come down a little bit, on the, uh, especially when people throw out their cigarette butts. I just want to. Oh, that is. If it weren't for the fact of road rage, I would go up and knock on every window and and 
issue a issue citizen citation. Mr. McGarry? <laughs> yeah. No, the, the question I have is when it's a constituent asks you, well, they see a dog running wild down defenses. the police station and maybe the yeah. trainer is there with the dog or whoever. Yeah. Who do you call? You're not going to call the animal warden. He's not working at nighttime. So who do you call? Police. 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 Yeah. Police. Call 911. Police. So you yeah. would tell them to call 911 and they'll send an officer yeah. up. But see, Jimmy brings up a good point. I mean, that's the other problem. How many calls are going to be made? Trust right. me, the police, you're going to, it's going to really hurt. Well, it goes both ways. I mean, you you know, you got people calling for dogs in the park that aren't supposed to be there, too. So. Well, yeah, but not as I much mean, as you're going to flood them with dogs now. Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so we're right. going to keep it on the agenda and bring it up for discussion. Yeah. I personally here. think it's a, it's a safety health issue, really, more than anything. I mean, again, I love dogs. I don't mind. I mean, I wish I could bring dogs into the park. The problem is if you bring all these dogs into a park and, you, and these dogs mess and they urinate and you're just not going to be able to clean it up appropriately. He, he, well, we do, that amount of, I'm, that I'm, amount of I'm, dogs. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. We do have animals in the park defecating and that, I mean, I see deer walking through. I see raccoons. I see all sorts of animals yeah. walking through the park. In fact, um, the other morning, what did I say? It, we saw uh, on Fox or something. Uh, there were two deer on um, on Washington Avenue, mm -hmm. right by the right by the creek there, and ducks inside the creek yeah, and the I, ducks I've are seen, walking up. Right. I, I mean, mean I've seen them on Glendale, but there's not <coughs> there, geese. You don't uh, geese are in the uh, in the golf course. I, that's amazing. The quarry Center. Is there? Yeah, they're in the and the quarry. All over the and quarry they attack center. people, but <laughs> See, there is a, an exception I, for service dogs. There was they're, they're the yeah. ones that are allowed at any. Well, that I understand. That, that's super. That's a superseding so, law. I'm, I'm just saying that there I'm are animals in the parks. Attention. There are animals, and and we don't have any health yeah, but issues deer, right now. You're not bringing everybody. Bring your deer over to the park. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I'm just saying that there are there are birds and there are all sorts of animals in the parks already yes. that are. Just. Do I just I do. just view it as a health issue right now. That's okay. All. Actually, I view the geese as a health issue too. I mean, I I can't imagine. I was the other day I was driving by the golf course and there were tons of geese. I can't imagine golfing through all that geese mess. Clean it up every day. They is that what they're doing? Yep. yep. These big blowers, they blow it over and they pick it all up. Wow. There's also here a change to the ordinance regarding the size of gatherings requiring a permit from 25 to 15. Yes. Do you want to that's another issue that the the uh, Park and Recreations Department has been experiencing problems where the 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 Parks Department would issue a permit uh, for an organized event, and then uh, other uh, organizations that did not request it just could be an organized group, uh, a bunch of men. Um, they could get together and not call and, and basically take over those fields. So Mr. Danny feels that it's, uh, it's prudent that we, uh, any, any group of individuals utilizing as an organized event that would utilize any of the parks, playgrounds in the township, more than 15 or more would require a permit. Sounds, uh, so that would be in, like an organized running group too? Anything, anybody? If they're gonna, if they're gonna utilize the park and obstruct uh, a, an organized event that's already has a permit, there, there's been problems where um, it could be a baseball league that arrives, they have a permit, and there's uh, 22 people already playing ball there, and it becomes a dispute. We have a permit. Well, we're, we here, we're here. We're not leaving. And then, uh, you know, if it's after hours, it causes a problem. Mr. McCluskey? I'm good. Just gasping for air. I, 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 just <laughs> thinking. <laughs> what else? Thank you very much. Um, next on here, we have uh, um, our health inspector, Nancy, is here from the health department to come up to speak to us about the backyard hens. I was asked to uh, look into some guidelines and, and I guess regulations concerning uh, backyard hens or chickens. 
Um, mostly, uh, most of my information has come from Penn State Cooperative Extension. Uh, they have quite a lot of information on it. Uh, they also, I did list um, everything that our ordinances already address, um, and they also request a, or recommend a 25-foot setback from the property lines, which I think was the major, from my understanding, that was the major um, stipulation in this. Um, but I did break it down into uh, noise, odor, uh, pest control, coop construction, and some health and safety issues. I don't know if you, do you all have a copy or? You should be on yeah. your computer. I can go over some of the, you Yes, know, please. Some of the main things. One of them not allowing any document. roosters or male chickens. It's a separate document. Um, my understanding was oh, that ch they're having chickens for egg production. It's not, in here or no? Not raising for meat or anything like that. Um, so you don't need any roosters for egg production. Um, they recommend a number of chickens between four and six. Uh, obviously noise and odor issues. I, I don't have it here. Relating to the coops. Uh, regular cleaning, obviously, to prevent odor. Uh, they also mention um, waterfowl being, I don't know if we're looking at that, waterfowl being, you know, an issue for odor. To, to not permit, I don't know, if you wanted a bunch of ducks. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, thanks. Obviously, all I chickens you'd want to have confined to the owner's property, um, and there are there are a lot of um, recommendations for the coop construction. Huh? Does everybody have that? Yeah. Did you say the setback was twenty five feet? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what our current ordinance has, and that's also what's recommended in Penn State Cooperative Extension, as well as. And that there comes into concern when if you have a 25 foot property, if you have a 50 foot property. 50 foot property doesn't really give you any room. Yeah. That's a setback from side yard. If you keep it at 25 foot. Yeah. 20, 25 feet is pretty much the, I think I saw one for 15 feet. Um, otherwise, the others were 50 feet and 100 feet from the residential dwellings. So, what would be, okay. what about the side yard? So, you said, you said, 25 from, 25 the, from the property line, all property lines. All property lines. 25 feet has to be in inward, off 25 feet. Yep. And what would be the issue if we set that at 10 foot? That might put 25 might put it in the middle of somebody's backyard. No, Not I mean, sure, it, it, but it definitely <coughs> wouldn't lie. A, a good number of the houses in Havertown are 50 by 150, right. uh, a majority of them. So t telling somebody that. That, you know, 25 feet would give you the center of the yard. It would be, you know, you couldn't, you know, plus no the 25 space. foot from the other side. So right. You really, <laughs> yeah. You could be like paper thin. So, I mean, that. I I, I just wanted to mention everything right. that I've seen okay. and sure. read. Yeah. Um, I did see one for 15 feet. Um, the only other exception I saw was Lower Marion, which. <coughs> um, just what I'm wondering is. It was. They just had under, they had 50 feet from the property line, but then they had an exception for two small fowl. That's all, that's the way it was worded, so. I guess what I'm wondering is, is there a, a more of an issue in a health situation if it's 25 foot or if it's 10 foot? No, I would assume it was, it's just noise and odors. Okay. To the neighbors. To, Right, but I'm just trying to think. I mean, it's no, whether it's 25 foot from my yeah. fence or if it's 10 foot from my fence. They're, they're I mean, I think, we should I, I, mean, I think it would eliminate the large majority of food. Havertown homes. Yeah. 25 feet from the property line I agree. would eliminate. I mean, no. that's yeah. people. Not, not that against, I'm not saying most of the homes would be. That would eliminate most of the homes. information that you have yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. That so would so put it in. 15, 15 <laughs> to 20 would be, then you could have a 10 or 20 foot coop. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but. 25 would be, I think, I would think prohibit right. all but 10% of the houses. Yeah. That's what I figured was the main issue, you know, with this, because I think, I believe that's what's currently in our ordinance is the 25 feet. I mean, we, we, had, the, we had the example of the guy that came to the meeting. Uh, Jimmy, what was his name? He was, in, he was in your ward, Mr. McGarity. 
Your pardon? Uh, the guy who has, has the coupe on Brooklyn Boulevard. Yeah, Brendan Beach. Brendan, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that's 25 feet from the property line, right? I wouldn't know. No. You know? If it's on Brookline Boulevard, it's a 50 by 150 lot, right? Yeah, it's, well, so yeah. it's a big be, yard in the back, I'll tell you that. He's, it might be deep, but it's still but, from but, the sides. Yeah, from, from the sides we're talking. The about. overriding thing was we, I think our ordinance calls for a one-acre minimum lot. It, was the other thing. it does yeah, at so. this time. And that's what the request of the petition is, is to, for households to have the option to have a, a hens on their property that are less than that one acre. And how do we, how do we go forward on that? So the information is that, that what you have here that you have given us, and then our next uh, step is to go for uh, zoning, is to ask the zoning. Right. I, 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 I have concerns about this as well. I mean, we, we have in Delaware County, if not in Philadelphia, a significant rodent problem in our neighborhoods. And as much as I like chickens too, I wouldn't mind doing as that. As long as they're on a six foot leash. Well, you yeah. like a lot of animals. <laughs> I'm an animal just guy. Want to, uh, yeah. You like dogs, but you don't want them around. You like chickens, but you don't want them near you. <laughs> that's, no, that's not what I'm saying. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm I just think joking. that because we've had this problem, we're telling residents to take down bird feeders, and now we're going to put chickens in. And, and am I am I crazy, Larry? Don't we tell people to take down bird feeders? We recommend. We can't force them, but you're absolutely right. Uh, bird feeders are the, the the number one cause. Nancy's the expert. She educates me all the time, but it's a big problem for uh, rodents. What what is what 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 are your thoughts on that, Nancy? Do you think that it'll be a problem with rodents having a coop as long as we're following those recommendations? Um, yeah, most of the, as far as the feed and the waste and the cleanup of the pen is, is geared towards rodent control. I mean, that's what it, you know, those guidelines are about. Um, so it certainly could be a source if it's not maintained and not, you know, and the feed isn't um, uh, protected along with the waste product that, you know, but our, but our ordinance would cover that. It would make sure that it was, if they were following. In the guidelines I have there, you know, there is a lot that it's pest and rodent control. Okay. Then how do you, I mean, how would you enforce that? I was, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. And what, I, what, how do you enforce and the. And what's the uh, fines? It's going to be complaint driven. Is what it's going to be. Yeah, there, yeah. Uh, someone would have to contact the health department or someone would contact the. Well, Township see, that's the point. By the time that happens, you have you could have a rodent infestation. By the time that happens, and let me tell you, I've seen it. I've seen it on, on in Westgate, the burrows that they they dig, and they're they they can multiply very rapidly. Mm -hmm. You know that, Nancy. Yeah. You've seen it, right? So by the time that happens, you already have a significant problem. Well, speculation says you. You're saying, really, it's well, speculation. We've, we've got a rodent problem now. Oh yeah, yeah. we definitely about. have a rodent problem. Now. That's what I'm talking about. Bill. Yeah. I, I no, agree. He's saying he said speculation. I said no, it's no speculation. No, no, no. What I'm saying is no, that no, no, with no. the chickens, you're saying with the chickens, though, we, we we could have a worse condition. I mean, we could, but we might not. Or, I mean, <laughs> let's let's be, feed's going to get out. You know that. I mean, feed's going to fall where it shouldn't go. I mean, you know, it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is that I don't know if it's going to happen. Any other? Perfect world that we want. <laughs> Fox is a love. Yeah. Fox, that's right. Well, you know, Fox could like chihuahuas, too. They're pretty small. Who knows? They do. They do. You know? They like cats. I mean, let's like really. They like cats. <laughs> I mean, we do small, have a, a, a petition cats. here where there's a, a 200 and some people, 300 and some people, I guess, that, that have signed it that do have an interest here in our community. Um, I don't think we had that many people on the resolution for redistricting. But, I mean, we do have our due diligence to look into this to see what we can do. I, I, I don't disagree with that. And... and I'm thankful that Nancy's looking at this, but again, from my perspective, you talk about a health issue and possibly a safety issue because of the significant problems that 
we have in our in our township. It's not. It's happening now. Would you agree? We have a rodent problem. Uh, yes. So if there are, then you want. Well, I think issue I right think now. There's, so, there's, and the problem is enforcement. Well, I, I mean, I think the issue is uh, under this the guidelines that Nancy has here. There, there's predator and pest control, and you know the food has to be in rodent-proof containers and it has to be stored in that. So the, the issue becomes if if that is spilled and not taken care of properly. Um, I mean, part of what we have to consider, I think, is is this a greater than average risk of, of creating a larger problem of is there is there a greater likelihood that this is not going to that the coop is not going to be taken care of because i mean if, if someone has a backyard dog and they feed their dog in the backyard and leave that food out overnight too that's that's going to attract rodents. and that's happened right and and i agree with you that's but happened, I'm, I'm saying and dog feces has happened where we've we've had to go i mean didn't you go to different people's property and tell them you got to pick up the dog waste yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's controlled by enforcement yes but by that time we already had a problem so, so I think the issue is then where the dogs. Where are you gonna? Where are we as this board gonna sort of set that line in terms of and ordinance pro open. protection? And that's that's something that we can have a healthy debate over. But then, I mean, that's the real issue. What Nancy has here is is something that's set up that, if followed, um, would not create a larger rodent problem. The issue is if these guidelines are not followed, right? I mean, that's what Correct. we're talking about. Yes. Right. And again, by that time, you've got a significant issue. But there's guidelines out there for everything, such as for dogs, too, in the backyard. For cats. But, but, but you know, I, 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 I mean, no, it's I, not. Why don't we even put it through towards a, a trial period? Why not try that? I'm just saying. Nancy, what would be the fine if you go out and someone's not maintaining it? We talked about fines for. Might as well. If it's three hundred dollars for the dog waste, what is it for? <laughs> Don't talk to Andy about that. It's got to be two thousand dollars for this. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I've had it with these people. <laughs> uh, mostly the um, for property maintenance um, chapter is not to exceed one thousand, and the cost of prosecution. That's for the rodent control. Nancy, are there ordinances in Lower Marion, Radnor, Newt, Marple, Upper Darby, and uh, Springfield are adjacent to me? Do they, does anybody already have an existing ordinance on this? Yeah, yeah. yeah Lower Mary. Uh, Marble, Marble this Township one. requires an acre with a 100-foot setback from human habitation and 50-foot from any property line. Um, Springfield, yeah. under their zoning, the only thing I could locate was it seemed like it, there was no farm animals at all. I, I can't be 100% going through okay. zoning ordinances. Uh, Lower Marion is the one that did have an exception. Um, they had a 100-foot... 100 feet from the building, 50 feet from the property line, uh, with the exception of 50 feet from the property owner's house. But they did list an exception for two small fowl for the, from those setbacks. So they didn't give setbacks for having just two small ones. Um, they just listed that as an exception. Um, and Radnor, I, I really couldn't locate. They talked a lot about commercial farming and commercial livestock. Right, they got bigger and, can we, can you just, I mean, so we don't have to debate this without enough information. Can you discuss with Lower, they've, Lower Marion seems like the only one that's got an ordinance. Okay. Can you just sure. talk to your counterparts, find out what complaints, what issues that they've had, and then present that to us so we understand what the ramifications may be so that we can make an informed decision? Can I have a, a chicken for as a pet? In the In, inside, you can probably. To? Oh. Well, no, I'm just saying, I can have a, if I want a dog, I, you know, I can have as, as a domestic animal, a pet, and I, if it's in the backyard, I have to have a fenced in area. Uh, I have to clean up the um, defecation, what, in 24 hours, I think it is, that you, you know, to take care of the animal. Um, I have to keep it on a leash, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if I wanted a chicken as a, as a pet, I mean, you can have a belly it's pig. You can have. I like to see that walking on a leash. You know? Well, no. Yeah. All I'm saying is that if I wanted to have one as a pet or two as a pet, could I do that? I think it's already in our ordinance. Have prohibited animals. I know listed in the thing, and I don't have it in front of me. To that's one of the prohibited animals. The farm animal. I think it is. I think we prohibit. Yeah. So is a pig, but you're allowed to have that one, right? Uh, I think 
it's, it's in the house. People take their pig out to walk it, and people can't have a pig. <laughs> Can I talk about the setback requirement? Does a um, doghouse have to be 50, 25 foot from the? <laughs> so if this, if the 25 foot setback from all sides, all property lines uh, would eliminate most um, properties or households in Haverford Township from uh, having chickens. Um, I'm just wondering if we could make an exception or either reduce it to 10 feet or uh, say say at the property line with the approval of your neighbor, subject to the approval of your neighbor, so your neighbor would actually have to sign off on allowing for that chicken coop to be you know, on the property line or 10 feet. And that neighbor would also serve as the person who would kind of police to make sure that things were done, there, there weren't roads. Uh, they're the ones who are going to call the police or the, or you or whoever to tell you about a problem. So you keep, you keep the neighbors. You want to make sure the neighbor, in my view, the neighbor ought to be happy. Um, so if the neighbor signs off on something that's less than 25 feet, it seems to be to make make sense. You could limit the number of chickens. Too. Yeah, you could. Yeah. You yeah. could say if um, if it's. You know, 25 feet would be the regulation, and the only exception to that would be if you had okay. the signature of all adjacent properties um, to that. So would that, that would that work, uh, Lori, or is that would that be would that be? I think, if, <coughs> sorry, I think if you want to do that, you want to um, uh, get a signature of any property owner that is where the coop will be less than 25 feet from a right. property line. Because right, right, right. Because exactly. established that minimum standard without getting the neighbor's approval. Um, so if, you're gonna, if you want to reduce it <coughs> under the 25 feet, that seems like a logical way of handling it. Yeah, because I, I think they'll be, the neighbor will be the, the enforcement arm for us, I think. I think that the thing There's is then it almost forces you into a situation where you require... Yeah, no pigs. What's so that? you require a permit no, like to pigs. erect like an exterior maintenance facility for a one of the animals that's in the list, mm -hmm. you know, the chickens. Um, Lord. Um, well, we have the large animals, the small, but the small animals were um, like chickens Kittens. and ducks and geese. But Nancy was just talking about the uh, waterfowl and there being limits in other communities. So maybe you only want to do it for certain of the small animals that are kept as pets and not as farm animals. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that constitutes, sorry, a, f a farm animal and a pet? Can, can I also just say, I mean, th these are guidelines that she provided for us. So it's the ordinance itself, we, we wouldn't get till right. September, probably, right? I so, get I mean, it. There's, I there's additional time to discuss this. Um, there is, but I, I'm just trying to think, yeah. where else do we do that? This no, I, I agree with you. This is the venue. I'm just, I just want to make sure we're, we're all on the same page about what we're talking about. There's, there's not an actual ordinance on the table no. to vote on next right. week. Yet. No, no, no right. there right. isn't. There isn't. This is the health department's right. uh, but we're giving us, yes. Mr. Siegel? Yeah, we need to be careful, though, in whatever we draft, because the various provisions in Section 49 of the Code have very specific definitions um, for everything related here. And unless we look at how they interplay, we're going to end up with conflicting regulations. Because I'm just looking at the, there's maintenance regulations for small animals, which would include chickens. But, but under that provision, they have to be 25 feet already from, a, no, less than 25 feet from the property line. So there's, there's a whole series of things. That we have to be very careful mm -hmm. in looking at this. This is not as That's, simple yeah. as it sounds. No, it's not. Because it's not. 4910, with the maintenance regulations alone, um, ha would probably have to be completely revised or looked at just to make sure because I could see all the I could see the conflicts just listening to this discussion. Uh, yeah, that section is extremely confusing. The, the, <laughs> well, part of the problem is that the definitions that we use in our code are not consistent with all of the definitions used under state law, so that we've got different definitions and state law refers to domestic animals. And there's there's a number of issues here. So we need to rewrite 49. <laughs> well, yeah, we may. Well, I'm gonna, I do want to say that um, initially um, you had almost the same exact set of regulations, and then you amended it to reduce um, 
the setback of the housing of small animals uh, in 2004. So you've already done this once. It's your ordinance is 2432. Um, so you have already reduced the area from um, initially it was a 50 foot setback, um, at least 50 feet and 100 feet from the home and a one acre minimum. So we're net, we've now broken it, further broken it down. So we took the small animals and put them on a 25 foot setback. So I think we've been walking back the regulations as we've seen that, you know, we're not experiencing any problems. I do understand what your concern is about rats and contributing to what is a serious problem. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think one acre is, is probably sufficient to change that I think would be a, a mistake but you know there's a, there are other issues like disposing of a dead uh, chicken you, you have in here that's in accordance with the uh, disposal of a rodent how would how would you properly dispose of a rodent putting it in the trash <laughs> I mean, not trying to be funny but how would you dispose of a rodent chicken wings chicken breast chicken <laughs> I mean that's how you that's how you would dispose of a but you can't chicken. actually you're right that but you can't you can't use the chicken for you can't what I'm you, sorry you, you wouldn't be able to use the chicken though for edible reasons no but would, would, would you only be for, in the regular trash yeah. is what I'm asking how how do you dispose of a chicken and how big do the do chicken coops have to be to allow chickens to thrive without being cooped up <laughs> <laughs> you like that, right? Uh, it's a very funny. Very funny. For that right? for uh, on range the Penn State on tree. extension yeah. service. So I'm talking about. Um, I think it's two range square foot. Per range. Per I'm sorry. Two. Don't they need exercise to run around? Then you can have an exercise. They give they give a, uh, the spacing requirements for the coop, the treadmill. exercise area, and the nesting. They even give you dimensions for that. So how big is with with one need? If they don't have an acre of lot. Square for, foot for chicken, right? Yeah, two square feet. Two square feet for chicken, she said. <laughs> oh, is that what she said in here? I'm sorry, Bill. Anyway. I think the exercise area, they consider it, if you provide one, apparently you don't even have to provide one. Um, Poor chicken. It's like three square feet, yeah. And the nest is supposed to be 12 by 12, or, or one foot by one foot. How do I get that little treadmill to work? I don't think Purdue gives them two square feet per chicken. <laughs> oh. so, <clears throat> then my, my point is, is that we, we have ordinances and all for, for pets, for dogs, and what have you, and people are supposed to follow those ordinances and, and those. And I, I just can't see why if those who want chickens they would follow the rules too. That's you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I, that there's Bill going to be a Bill made a suggestion. A, I hear a what you're saying, but. Commissioner Wexler made a suggestion. I think we need to find out what the other townships yeah, are exactly. experiencing. I think that's, that's correct. And yeah. you know, get an accurate. And that's fine. This isn't this isn't no, on know. the agenda for I next week. I get it. You know, this is the discussion. Time. I just I just so. don't look. I, mean, I love animals. I, I really do. I wish we had. I would. I would love <laughs> to have chickens, dogs, <laughs> like them near me. We've had, we've had a we have a cat now. We had a dog and a cat, but. I've seen people in Newtown Square have chickens and, and they have a coop and they're running around. And they're, they're, they're noisy, even though they're not. So are my neighbor's kids. kids. You know, it's <laughs> well, yeah, but you, can, you, you almost like to hear children play. I don't want to hear some chicken thing going nuts. Right, I hear you. But, you know, I mean, it's, I think we have an obligation I love here. dogs, but a barking dog is barking for a long time. People What's, complain. People call the police all the time about absolutely. dogs. Absolutely. But we, we still have, an, uh, I feel, an obligation here to address the matter because of uh, the number of people um, who are asking to see if they could have no, I, I get the it. opportunity and I, and, to have chickens. I'm sure the gentleman that came, he said his area was very clean, and I believe him. But, but if you enact this and you allow so many people to have this, you're not going to get everyone like this gentleman came. I, I, trust me, you're not going to get that. Yeah, I, I, I would ask the, the board if they would entertain me to please to continue this no, that's fine. Uh, discussion. Well, again, it's, on, it's Commissioner we Wester's recommendation yep. that, that Nancy yep. look into what other townships are doing and the problems that they face. <clears throat> 
And I would, I would ask about the rodent issue. I mean, I'm sure Lower Mar I've heard Lower Marion has the problem as well with rodents. I think we, I mean, I think your regulations already address, um, you know, the proper maintenance of the facility, you know, picking up the droppings, storing the feed in rat proof and fly tight containers, um, and at least twice a week, picking up any litter or droppings from the animals. So you already have some pretty stringent regulations, but the thing is, and I mean, I'm going to say that nobody's been to the township about the chickens that are there, and I know that they don't meet the 25 feet. So getting the message out to people that, hey, there are these standards, unless we'd receive a complaint, we wouldn't know. So you either want to regulate them, you know, where you have to permit them, or you just wait until you receive a complaint and then respond to a complaint. So that's, if you and if you regulate them, Commissioner Lewis's suggestion, if it's, housing is less than 25 feet, get the sign off of an adjoining neighbor. Oh, I night. totally agree with that. I think that is critical because I, I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it. I would want to know too, because by the time if somebody puts it in, it's only five feet from the property line. I'd be pretty upset. This information is available um, that you gave us, this um, nuisance control. I can put this out for public. Yeah, moreover, you want to take a look at Chapter 49 um, at your existing we'll standards. Right it's 49, yeah. subsection 10, so 4910. Right, and, and because I know for those who are interested, they, they probably would like, you know, to see the report. And that's okay. Oh, sure. Thank you, Ver. I know you're one person to cover this entire township, I realize that. And thank you very much for all the, you know, the research that you do on this, Nancy. Um, and I'm sure tomorrow you'll be off running on, in other directions. So thank you very much Wait, before for she coming goes, tonight. I, I too want to thank her because she was instrumental in helping with the road and problem in Westgate. Right, and I, I, I don't know if I got a chance to thank you, but I appreciate <clears throat> your quick response. You're educating the residents. You did a great job with that, so thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Wonderful job in the second, also. All right. Thank you, Inspector. The same issue. Same issue. Yeah. Same issue, and she same did a Dennis great job. Same had the same issue as well. Yeah. All right, so this is available. <laughs> and I will send that out. Who okay, cares? Yeah, there was right. an issue. There was, I'm sorry, there was one issue. One. One. Okay. Yeah, an issue. Yeah, right. I'm just trying to go back now to my. Uh, here we go. It's a little bit more than my etch a sketch. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> In Westgate, right? In Greenbrier. All right. Uh, we have the, um, so, and, any, and if you, anybody that wants that information, send me your email address and I'll send it back to you in the PDF. Um, police Department crime update. Chief? Police Department report for July 2017. Parking tickets, 235 were issued, 233 traffic citations, 154 written warnings. We had a homicide on 729 2017, the 2300 block of Haverford Road. 29 year old Dartmouth resident was shot two times by an assailant who has since been identified. The investigation, investigation is ongoing with Delaware, Delaware County CID and the Philadelphia Police Department detectives. Yeah. And a robbery at the Burger King actor broke through the drive-in window while it was open, uh, armed with a firearm. Uh, I took cash from the registers. And the funny part about this was the front door was open. He could have walked in. Uh, strong arm robbery. Well, Burger King is no longer there. Yeah, out exactly. Last week, so. they knocked it down. Uh, strong arm robbery. Chatham Park School uh, bicycles were taken. Two juveniles and one adult were arrested and charged. And a burglary. Uh, 200 block of Kenmore Road, uh, Fourth Century. Two Chinese statues that were taken. The house was ransacked. Uh, 1,000 block of Township Line, 4th Century in the daytime between 7 and, and uh, 4 o'clock. A TV was taken. And the 700 Half Road has a Sitco gas station at 4th Century. Had a burglary attempt at the 1,300 block of Leader Road was investigated, was unfounded. Uh, we had seven thefts from vehicles, uh, Beachwood Road, Seal Road, Washington Avenue, Woodbine, uh, uh, Woodbine Road, uh, 2 and Woodbine, uh, Foster, and the YMCA. Uh, of them, seven, only one was forced entry, and that was at the YMCA. Canine usage, 
uh, with stolen vehicle and drug for two arrests, uh, three vehicle investigations, a uh, canine at a burglary scene, a large with uh, open buildings, open vacant house, a robbery with a building search, a drug investigation, building search, and a homicide investigation assistance. Any questions? Phew. I do, I do have something to say about the, uh, and it's off the subject, not has nothing to do with police, it's the Burger King. I've been getting a lot of people ask me, um, you know, what's going on there. They're building another Burger King. They knocked it down and building another Burger King. No Chick-fil-A, no Pudding Lane, no, none of that is going in there. It's going to be a, uh, a Burger King. I, I have a comment. You love Burger King, I know, but. I do love Burger King. <laughs> gotta go. I, 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 I can't eat Burger King, but I. I do love Burger King. <laughs> Chief, uh, in respect to the homicide that occurred, the um, the reward for any information is up to how much now? $7,500. $5,000 was put up by the Delaware County District Attorney's Office and $2,500 mm -hmm. was put up by the uh, federal marshals, okay. federal marshals who are also in the case. And... Uh, they should go to our website. Is there a number? Is there a number for any tips that there's you have? Tip, there's multiple tip lines. Um, do we have that available? Now? 610 610-853-9213 is our tip line, and the two one five is Crime Stoppers. I'd have to look up the number, but if you do our tip line, uh, it, we're recording all the phone calls. It's, 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 uh, and that goes right to uh, a detective's uh, phone directly. And, and um, there were some residents that had asked me if they, uh, and you, you had uh, informed us that the, you believe that the suspect is not in Haverford Township, correct? I believe it's the Philadelphia area, correct. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the quick response that you, you did and the police did that night. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Um, commissioner updates. There is a continued discussion here. We have uh, Mr. Siegel on the, the process for the applications for reorganization. Uh, yeah, briefly, on that or, um, <clears throat> I revised the process that we had discussed at the last meeting um, in a couple of ways. I took Mr. Uh, Commissioner um, Lewis's suggestion and all applicants would be required to be interviewed. And um, I also added in a process for vacancies or on, a, or on a empty ter you know, terms that are vacant because someone has left, so that there's also a process for doing that. Um, otherwise, it's essentially the same. Um, but I tried to revise it based on the sentiment of uh, the board. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, if there's any questions. Oh, well uh, uh, let's see, we have, I'm sorry? No, he Mr. Said, Lewis. You. Yes, and segueing into Mr. Lewis, they're the proposal for amending articles of incorporation with RHM. Actually, I would defer to Commissioner Wexler because he's chair of that committee. I don't know how my name got behind it other than I submitted it. But maybe, Bill, you could. Yeah, I think uh, uh, what, what we want to do is, is, is take what they're proposing and have it run through Mr. Burns and Mr. Pannoni to make sure so we can compare it to see what it's going to cost and what our alternatives would be and then have our staff present to us if we have an alternative to it what they are what the cost would be and, and the recommendation by staff as to what we should do so i think, I think that a makes legal sense. review and a technical review by our engineers is yeah and what's it, what, what's the time frame on that do you expect in the next i think they should be able to look at the agreement in the next couple of weeks i guess right yeah, sure. yeah. by next week probably yeah mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And like any agreement, which would go before the solicitor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Wexler, do you have uh, an update on the tax credit? Yeah, Ordinance P14-2007, uh, the enactment, there was a state law that Representative Santoro was co-sponsor of to offer property tax credits who are qualifying volunteer firemen throughout there. Uh, so we've put it out there. The Bureau of Fire has met many times. The chiefs are getting together. They've come up with a point system. It's a 200-point credit system to do that. Uh, I don't think that we're going to bring it up next week to do this. This month, it'll probably be in September. The, the five as you probably can guess, we have five different fire companies. So the criteria for the point system, we want. I've asked them to make it uniform between the five companies so that we don't have uh, any disparities and quirks between throughout the township 
So they're revising that. Their committees are getting together, the chiefs. And because of vacations this month, I think two or three of the chiefs are on vacation. They can't get together in August. So I think what we'll do is we'll push that to September so that we get a, a better cohesive agreement on what the point system should look like. And then, uh, and then we're going to administer it through documents of the township with their input so that, it, so that it's fair between all five companies and we don't have a bias there. But the, the state rule is it's a credit for active volunteer firemen. So it's geared towards those people that actually come and fight fires and do that stuff. Um, so that's, they just need another month or so to get their act together. So we're, uh, uh, so it's lawful, it can be done. It's being done elsewhere. Yeah, it's, a, it's being done a lot of different. Uh, yeah, it locations. makes a lot of sense because otherwise, you know, we're losing volunteer, volunteer fire. Yeah, right uh, now, I think folks. we give our volunteer firemen free parking at meters. Free so parking what? They get free parking at a meter at, at the in the township. Yeah. So. How do they do that? If it's a they get a tag meter. that hangs from your oh, I see. mirror. So, um, okay. but this is a little bit meteor. Yeah, well, I think we definitely. The, uh, for those fun. that don't know, and the reason that the tax credit's probably just a small attempt to do that, you've got a lot of firemen that that don't own homes. We have a lot of young people between the ages of 16 and something that live with their parents. The parents don't qualify for the tax the tax break on the house because they're not the fireman, they're not the property owner. So we're not talking about a lot of people, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to entice some of the younger people to grow up to stay in our community Absolutely. and to give them some mechanism where they can afford to live in this community. Because a, a lot of what happens is these kids grow up, they go away to college, they come back, they're still firemen, it's in their blood. Uh, they get married, they look for a home here, they can't afford it, they move somewhere else so where they can't afford. So it's some small bit of incentive to try and keep them in our township and keep them as residents. Right. And, and this Good incentive idea. actually is just for municipal tax, not for school tax or county tax. Right, it's just our township tax. Yep. That's great. Bill, does that, um, just that raises the question, does that include, is it, is it a percentage off the, the trash fee as well? No, that, that would be off the actual. Off the actual uh, millage. Off the actual millage for okay. the, like a 20%. It's a 20%. It's a 10%. Right. Actually. Maximum 20%. Yeah. So, Bill, just to give people an idea, what, what do we say by having an all-volunteer force uh, in this town? Well, there's, there's varying looks at it. I think Larry's looked at it over the years. We've looked at this when we did the EMS evaluations. The best guess is, is it's somewhere between 8 and $11.5 and million dollars. By having a volunteer um, it force. It depends on how you define certain things, but yeah. the minimum would probably be 8, eight to $9 million, and at the top, you're talking eleven and a half to $12 million a year of additional revenue it would take to have an, a paid fire department in this Old township. department. Yeah. yeah. So this is just so volunteers a save us. A, yeah. You could probably make an argument that 10 million is probably a fair number of the savings. It could be, you could argue a little bit higher, but, um, but, but I think I'd it, say 10 million is a fair a saving. A very small way of acknowledging Let me just that, add, yeah. when, when you're doing it at 8 million, you're only doing two fire companies, not five. Yeah, we, we have five fire departments. I mean, the problem we have is just like any other municipality in the, in the Commonwealth, is our, our staffing during the daytime hours is, is going to be critical. And that's not just Haverford. That's, that's across the Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, people work. Most people don't work in the community where you live, except you're in a rural community typically. Um, we're fortunate that we have five fire companies. If there's a house fire in this township, we have five fire companies that respond. So we'll, right now, probably for the next foreseeable future, in the next few years, we have enough manpower between the five companies that can man trucks during the daytime period, plus we have mutual aid from our neighboring communities. But we're starting to see the burdens. We respond to fires, uh, and Mr. Gentile can tell you, we respond, we're on the first alarm in half of Broomall Township. We're on the first alarm in half of Springfield Township. Uh, communities are realizing they, they may not have, if it's an active fire, if it's a working fire, and John can probably address this in much more detail, but if it's a working fire during the day, you're going to get companies from other municipalities that come in here. If, if all five of our companies, as we did on the, the fire down on, what was it, the fatal, uh, we had all five fire companies down in one there. We, we had to bring in other fire companies to man our stations in case there was a second fire in the township. And that was during the day. That was Martin Luther King Day, Strathmere Road. Uh, that was a big house fire. It took all the resources we had. That We were very fortunate it was a holiday. We have a lot of volunteer firemen that are township workers, so we had good turnout that day. Barnaby's was a recent one. Yeah, too. Barnaby's was on a Sunday. You know, it was on Sunday morning. I was driving five kids to the race, the Broad Street race that day. Uh, it was another good example of a big fire that we contained very well. It was a good sprinkler system stop there. 
Uh, but, but you can see during a weekday when people are working, uh, mutual aid is very, very key in all municipalities. We're very fortunate that we have five companies. And uh, Oakmont Fire Company, we're fortunate they have a fair amount of township school district workers that are close by. So we, we know we can get enough manpower today, 10 years from now. Who knows, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen and, yeah. and what's there. But, uh, so uh, this uh, is just a small token. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we're not losing money. We're not, you know, if, if we had to pick up a $10 million tab to have a paid fire department, we'd, we'd be big looking at big taxes. Tax I totally agree, race. Bill, and I, su I would support this totally. I wish we could think of some other ways that we can assist these volunteers who not only respond to fires, but accidents as well, as you know, Bill. Yeah, well, I mean, we go on the blue route if there are, there are entrapments and fires and on cars. And I think what people miss is, yes, we respond to fires, uh, but the training requirement of what we're asking Huge. these men and women is it's over 300 hours of training just to become a basic fireman. That's of your own time. So your 300 plus hours of training to become a fire one, fire two, uh, and to be certified in vehicle rescue and, and stuff. There's a, there's a huge time commitment to training. And it's just, uh, this is just, again, it's just a small token of what we can do. So Bill, do you think this is, an, is it, do you think this is adequate or do you think we should do, should do more? Well, I think this is what we're allowed to do. I mean, there's the a state, max, there's this a max. Is, this is. Max is I think 20% up there's to There's a max, we're, we're doing the max. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My only question just for procedural is when are our tax bills sent out? When do we send them? Sent out in the, the last week of January. Okay, because the process starts much right. before then. But my understanding of the act is that the list has to be certified 45 days in advance of when tax bills are mailed. And if you do it December 15th, you're probably not going to make the tax bills for the next year. So we need to look at that carefully. Right. We actually don't generate, we okay. can't generate because we don't get the data file from the county until probably the 15th of January, okay. but it is a very small window from the 15th of January till right. January 28th when we send them out. But yeah, but, but I, what I'm saying is my reading of the state law is that that list has to be presented to the township 45 days in advance of mailing the tax bills, and I don't think this ordinance does that. We can look at it. And, and make sure you want to make sure of the timing. We'll get the timing. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my concern. Looking at so it's, we really right. know what kind of numbers we're dealing yeah. with. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many, what right. this population well, is going yeah. to be. Um, and this year might be a little, you know, we I'll might have to that. adjust our calendar a little bit after we know how many people we're dealing with. But we'll, no, we'll no. work with everybody. I'm sure the fire companies will work with us. Yeah, thank you. So that's now for, thank you very much. And it's too late. Then Taking that off the agenda, uh, that's, that's why I went and looked at this. Can we take that off now, or, or is that do we have to um, bring that up next week to table it? No, we I think you could it. do either way. I mean, yeah, your, your agenda is really not even established till Thursday. Yeah. Okay, so. so then we could just take it off. The right. Take it off. Yeah. So we'll talk about it in September. Yeah. Right. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. And then so we that will come off the agenda. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Commissioner, for, for your report on that. Um, Mr. President, I have one more committee update. Oh. Mm -hmm. For committee? Yeah. Okay, yes. Because yeah. there are, and then we'll, we'll hit on these other ordinances. Okay. That are here. So before I begin on the police committee update, uh, I want to thank the police and all of our volunteer firefighters and uh, EMTs and paramedics for coming to National Night Out. That was a very successful evening, and uh, it was it was uh, probably the biggest crowd I've seen in years. And uh, the canine uh, demonstration, a lot, of, a lot of residents commented on how great that was and how these dogs are so well trained. And again, it's a lot of hours in training as well. Same thing with the, uh, with the police. So uh, thanks to everyone that was involved in that. The police committee meeting uh, met on July 24th, and that consists of myself, Commissioner Lois, Commissioner Oliva, and Commissioner McGarrity. Uh, we went over with the police uh, chief uh, how the cameras would operate, and uh, we were very satisfied on, on all the responses that uh, the chief did uh, provide us. Uh, the police officer can start the camera himself, uh, or when the red lights and sirens come on, the, uh, the camera is activated. Uh, there's an automatic uh, download at the end of the day when the police pull in. And uh, 
We have also have cameras on the dashboard and in the back area, correct, Chief? And we are the first major department in Delaware County, full squad, to have body cameras. So I commend you, Chief, and your Deputy Chief, and your staff for, for um, taking the initiative to put this in place. This wasn't a capital budget last year, and there was a question about minors, and that it doesn't matter. If you're a minor, you get pulled over just like anyone else. Uh, parents will get called as as the norm is now, and um, apparently the uh, the DA's office is aware of your uh, initiative here. Is there anything you want to add to this, Chief, or anybody in the police committee wants to add something? No, I think you covered it well. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. As you said, we're, we're the first major uh, police department in Delaware County to implement these. We're in, in the training and uh, operate not the operational phase yet. We're still going through the testing process, so they're not fully rolled out yet. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a plus for the officers. Uh, uh, if there's any question, uh, if there's a complaint, we, we can uh, look at that uh, video right away. And what we have found with in-car videos, when we had complaints against officers or an issue that came up, we we're able to either validate it or find out that it was was a, a bogus. So it's it's a safety. It is a safety uh, mechanism for police officers. Also, it's. it's we're, it's a learning process for us. It's new, uh, but it, it's uh, something that is uh, that is part of where we where we are in the world now. Everybody's videotaping everything, so you know you see the videos, what you see on TV, or any half of what actually happens. That way, we have the full version. God forbid something serious should happen. So, and, and I appreciate we we commend the commissioners for financing this. It's a, a, a lot of money to do this, and it came from uh, your 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 vote to uh, proceed with this. Uh, Chief, one, one uh, thing, you do uh, inform the person that was pulled over that they are being recorded. You do that now anyway, right? We do that now as soon as, as, soon as possible. We don't, have to, we don't do it right away as soon as it's, uh, the officer has the opportunity. But they are informed that they're being uh, taped audio and, and uh, video. And I just want to make sure the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled last month about pub that, that police recordings like this are public. And are we going to have a policy that will be consistent with that decision? Policy is in place. Thank you. You mean making it available to the public if they request it? The Supreme Court ruled that uh, essentially dash cam videos are public unless they're part of an investigation. So I just want to make sure that our policy is consistent with that. In fact, we, we just upgraded our policy uh, uh, because, because of that Supreme okay. Court decision. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Chief. Anything further on your committees? Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. Uh, next week, we have several ordinances and re resolutions going forward. Um, there's a, anybody have any questions regarding any of those individual, you know, those particular ordinances? Uh, Commissioner Siegel, you had yeah, one. I, I just want to, we have on here um, something that's been going on for a long time, and the dedication of Brittany Lane, which is the street at the opposite the end of Darby Road, somehow that area had never been uh, dedicated to the township and the residents have requested it. I know Mr. Pannoni has looked at the road and is wit up and the ordinance of dedication is on the agenda for next week. I don't, I don't know if there's anything else to add. Yeah, we did that with, um, yeah we've done that um, with the reserve and other areas. Uh, in, but in this particular case um, there is a right of way uh, when the subdivision was done, it was um, submitted by First Latham Corporation, and it calls out um, a road that's proposed to be dedicated to the township. The interesting thing is that the township gave approval on this in 1989. Um, the homes were finally built out in the early 90s, um, and the developer had not offered uh, the the improvements to the township for dedication. In fact, the residents of the community were the ones that were pursuing this, and they've reached out to the developer who was still around um, to, to see whether or not he would be amenable to something like this. Now, Dave has been working um, on reviewing the legal descriptions. We have a couple of things that we have to work out um, on the legal descriptions. I don't know if Dave wants to get into them now, but. Um, we have a solid description of the Brittany right of way. We have some issue with the um, with the sprawl road because, as you know, sprawl is a state highway. So the only thing we would be taking is the ultimate right of way, and we seem to have a hiccup in 
getting what we're looking for um, understood um, by the by the group. Um, there also seems to be, according to their amended bylaws, an underground stormwater facility, which is not on the on the record plan. So we're trying to locate exactly where this underground facility is, and and the records are pretty muddled. And as you can imagine, a 30-year-old uh, case file it is in archive storage. So we're we're having some difficulty laying our hands on some of this information. And according to the residents, there's been a big turnover in residency. So yeah. there isn't any solid history there either. Well, we, we should. Will we be able to vote next week, or what do you think? Yeah, we're keeping it on because yeah. it has to be done by ordinance, right. um, and an ordinance requires two readings. And worst case scenario, when we get to the September meeting, if we don't have it worked out, we could pull it then for for another month. Yeah. Okay. So I just uh, just a question for you or Dave. Um, how how do we determine that a road is um, sufficient or in good good enough shape for us to uh, take dedication? Does it have to have a certain amount of useful life for before it has to be re repaid before we take it, or how, how does how do you make that determination? Well, it's, that's a good question. If you remember, we went through the same thing off and of Cooperstown. Right? Yeah, Cooper Carmen. Yeah. 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 Yep. Now. A little bit of a different situation there. In that case, that road was never intended to be dedicated. The HOA brought that up to a certain standard, reasonable standard, ahead of time, and then we accepted the dedication of it. This case, this was always intended to be dedicated. Yeah. So it was built 30 years ago. It's uh, it's it meets this requirements part of plan. We spot checked the width. We looked at the curb. So I guess the simplest way to say is it looks like a road that's about 30 years old, mm -hmm. but there's nothing out of the uh, ordinary that makes it look like it's a severely deteriorated road or deteriorating quicker than 30 years. It's not being brought up to a brand new standard. Yeah. Right, acceptance. So what we're accepting is exactly what it is. It's a 30 year old road. Which we should have done 30 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's the simplest way to say it. Lori's mentioned that. We're really rock solid on the Brittany Road part of the dedication document. It describes it. It should have been it should have been offered back in the 90s it would have it would have been accepted just like we've accepted other roads we get a little bit of an anomaly out on sprawl road but I'm, I'm not too worried about being able to straighten that out okay great thank you thank you very much all right trying to keep within the ordinance of a 90 minute meeting um does anybody have any questions or concerns about the other ordinances or resolutions that are scheduled for next week Okay. Um, Mr. Gentile, anything about the mutual EMS aid agreement? It's actually not EMS. It's fire um, and disaster agreement. It's, it's a common agreement that we have with all townships. Lower Marion asked us to put together. Uh, if we would sign it. I have no issues with it. I support it. Volunteer fire departments would support it as well. Thank you. I, okay. I, and I have a question about the salt. Uh, if you get to that one. Okay. The... Um, 2018 budget adoption schedule, October 31st is when we'll see it first. Okay, um, Niter Hall, paving of the driveway in the past contract. Opened up the bids this morning and uh, they'll be awarded. You'll, you'll have that in your next attachment to be awarded for uh, Monday night's meeting. And uh, that's all HUD money. We've been planning that for almost two years now. It was a long delay because we we're waiting for the HUD monies to be approved. Uh, so that should be done. Came in within budget, within a few, two or three thousand dollars, a little bit more than what. But again, it's being paid by HUD. Doesn't come out of our our operation or our capital. Thank you. Um, road salt, Mr. Lewis. Hey, just a quick quick question. I saw your chart. Um, so we do a ten township uh, compact and bid that out. Yes. I'm just curious as to why some years we got it cheaper than the state, and some years. We were more expensive than the it's state. It's just so how supply and demand uh, for the when you, when you buy it in the when you buy it's set it's set up front though right yes so I would think the state would have when the state's buying it they're buying it at the same time yeah. and buying it always buying more so I would think it'd be cheaper so I'm just curious have have you, good negotiation maybe on your part now? no how do we no get? just the way the bids went um, you know we 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 doing the consolidation with the other towns does and, it make sense to add yeah. more I mean to give us more leverage. The other towns, yeah. we open it up to everybody. They're the, they're the ten that come. Yeah, is Springfield part of that? I'm not sure. I, I 
I don't know it. myself. You don't know? don't know. It came in four dollars cheaper than so we. Uh, this year's bids were probably four dollars a ton less Cheap than last year because there's yeah, more, more we supply. Just hope we yeah. just need to hope that we have the winter we had this past year. So yeah, it wasn't really a winter. Uh, well, I hope you have another one just like it. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. That's all I Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, that covers the agenda for next week. I want to. As always, the uh, the board thanks very much the staff of Harper Township for putting all this together and, and the research and, and what have you. Um, there being any nothing else, Chris, can I just mention one thing? When you were talking about the firemen and all that, I just want to give a little kudos. There's several departments in the township, and uh, I don't want to mention names because I know I'll forget somebody. But in, uh, in codes and in administration building and public works. These fellas, are, a lot of them are firemen. They drive the trucks. If a, if a call is during the day, some of those fellas jump off and go down, take care of our township. Uh, right here tonight, there's probably seven of us that are involved with the fire company or two in the township. And not that we fight fires, but just so everybody knows, there's a lot of people working for the township that are also volunteering for the township. I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you very much, Commissioner. That's a good point. Uh, there being nothing else, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. We will see everyone next week.